Happy Finish Friday, everybody. I hope you had a great July 4th. Um, our offices are actually closed today, but we wanted to come here and make sure that we continued on with our Finish Fridays to be able to help you use the Amy Howard at Home products to be able to make your home more beautiful, not just your furniture, but also your walls. Today, we're gonna to be going over Venetian plaster. So, I want you to know, we are getting ready to use this product in our own home, um, and we're gonna be redoing our bathroom. I'll have to take some shots and do a Facebook Live in there and let you see it. The home that we've bought is quite a bit older. It was actually built in the 40s. And in the bathroom, there's fabric on the wall, and I'm gonna be taking that fabric off the wall and doing white Venetian plaster. The other house that we have, um, a lot of you know it, is our Normandy house. Um, we actually had white Venetian plaster and colored plaster on every wall in that house, and I loved it because it's so easy to take care of. It's beautiful. It actually helps the house be cooler and in the summertime and warmer in the wintertime. Um, Venetian plaster, if it's real true Venetian plaster, is an incredible product that can help against moisture as well. A lot of people don't realize, but if you can't afford marble tile or ceramic tile in your shower, if there's already waterboard there, you can use the Venetian plaster in a shower. You can, it's great in bathrooms, but it's also great as backsplashes. We do use our Venetian plaster on the tops of furniture, um, which is a great durable surface. So there's lots of areas that you can use it. Um, and I've got some examples I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Um, but the other thing is that I want you to remember, and Jean's gonna go over this with us, um, you want to make sure that you use a true Venetian plaster that only has three ingredients, calcium carbonate, lime, and marble dust. That is the same formula, the same recipe that's been used for thousands of years by the Venetians who had, had, had a major water problem for a long, long time. So um, without further ado, I wanna introduce you to my soulmate, my best friend, my finishing buddy, um, my partner in crime, and my husband. So um, welcome. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, Jean is um, our finisher and mm -hmm. does all, when we start doing projects like this at our house, <laughs> if it's not painting furniture, um, I scream for Jean. And he is truly an artist with Venetian plaster on walls and there is a technique to it as well. A lot of you, this is something you're gonna enjoy doing in your own home, but if you do it well and you do it and you will, with no problem, it's not hard, mm -hmm. um, you're gonna have other people that are gonna wanna pay you to probably come and do it in their house as well. So, um, Or you'll pay somebody to, or you'll pay somebody to come do it. Um, but this is a product that we're very proud of that's in our line. Um, I, love, um, I love the recipe of it. I love the quality of it. I'm very proud of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited to be able to show them today. So um, let me just show them some examples and then you take us through mm -hmm. the actual how-to of it. So this is one, this is a board I want you to be able to see. Look at the sheen on this, guys. That's why when I talk about being able to use Venetian plaster um, in bathrooms and showers, it is water resilient. Of course, you wanna make sure that you're using it on waterboard, um, which is another kind of sheetrock. And then look at this one. You can also use Venetian plaster with a Mylar stencil. Um, we'll go over this just a little bit more in a minute, but this was actually done with our um, Amy Howard at Home wall stencil called honey bun and we pressed the plaster through it and it gave us this three-dimensional look isn't that fabulous then also here was another one that i had used another just mylar stencil and burnished it look at that so you can see you can create decorative elements on your walls that are three-dimensional embossing like this um, and you can use it on uh, furniture as well all right, so Jean, take us through, mm -hmm. let's say we've got a, um, a dry, this is just regular drywall mm -hmm. that you've gotten for us. Mm -hmm. And um, can we do the Venetian plaster, if we're gonna do it on walls like we are, mm -hmm. can we do this on, um, direct on raw sheetrock like this? Can we do it on an existing painted wall? What's gonna be the best way to do this? You know, there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it on the raw, 
and it, it's good because it will hold that first coat or you can use a coat of primer. Now the professionals would say put a coat of water-based primer on there first before you do it. It's a little extra time, but if you're going for that really beautiful finish, uh, then go ahead and prime it with a water-based primer first. So if we've already got paint on our walls, can the wall, can that paint color on our walls act as our primer? No, and I'll tell you why. Because of the synthetics that are in that latex paint, it will not hold the plaster. So it's, again, it's, it's always best if you've got a wall that's been painted to go over it with water-based primer first. Again, it'll hold that plaster better. The latex may be too sealed, especially the ones that are the higher dollar uh, because they've got more of the uh, binders and, and plasticides in there that would really prevent the Venetian plaster from holding. So use that water-based primer first before you do the Venetian plaster. Hate for you to go through the time and expense of doing that and then the plaster starts cracking and peeling off. Awesome, that's a good word. Okay, so we've got our wall. We've got, we're just going to start on um, raw sheetrock here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So take us through how we're going to take the plaster, how we need to mix it, what's the ratios? What we're going to do, and this is something, go to the hardware store before you do your house, do your wall. We always say, before you do your project, do a sample or your project will become a sample. And we don't want to uh, do anything that would cause a lot of extra work. So do some samples first, uh, especially because the plaster is going to come in white. It's just natural white you can either go to the paint store or online and order some universal tints and you can tint the plaster and that's how we got these great colors by using the tints and it doesn't take much. A few drops will change the color of five gallons of plaster. You can also use our pigments. You can use the pigments well. too. The only thing with the pigments, you have to use more of the pigment to get the color. It's not as strong as the tints are, but yes, you can. So again, we've just got, uh, I think this is 20 by 20, 24 by 24 square piece of sheetrock. You wanna make sure it's clean. You wanna wipe it down because you don't want dust. You don't want little particles because it'll get into the plaster. Okay. Then the next thing we do, let's talk about our tools. You know, as they say, a professional is only as good as the tools they use. What we've got, we've got just a putty knife and that's what we're gonna use to um, get our plaster out of the bucket and put it on our trowel. The trowel, again, you don't wanna just, if you're gonna do this on your uh, walls in your house, you don't wanna use a trowel that's made for brick and mortar. You want one for Venetian plaster and the best one that we found is by a company called Pavan. That's P-A-V as in Victor, A in is in November, Pavan, and they sell these online and they are made for Venetian plaster. A lot of the reason for that too is the fact that your corners should be rounded. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to have these, they don't, they don't have to, but Gene oh. likes, he likes that, but mm -hmm. he wants you to be able to have something that's got these rounded edges and something that's not really sharp like that on the edge. Right, and the reason for the rounded is because when we're applying this, if you have sharp corners, it'll tend to leave tr uh, trough marks into the Venetian plaster and you'll be constantly chasing trying to get that out. So that's why you do want rounded, rounded corners on your trowel. Real quick, um, Bren Brenda would like to know, can you use dry milk paint to tint the plaster? I have before and I do a lot of times when I'm working on furniture because you can do this technique that Jean's going to be showing you today on the tops of furniture. It looks beautiful. You can actually use mm -hmm. it on furniture if it's got straight lines. Mm -hmm. um, and when I do do that, I'll, I do tint it with our milk paint. So, mm -hmm. but Jean's talking about really large surface areas. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be doing walls, it's nice to use just a universal squeeze tint. Mm -hmm. um, in our house, when we did it, we did a lot of our walls in white Venetian plaster. It's the most beautiful. Yes. It yes. truly is yes. beautiful. Yes. So the next thing we'll have, we've got a mixing bucket. Depending on how much you're going to mix, that'll determine the size of your bucket. 
Uh, keep in mind, mixing is very important. It does take a while to mix this because it's got to be smooth as cake batter. Uh, you don't want any of the little particles, anything, is when you're mixing that. And so when we do this, we've got our drill. You can use quarter cordless, and we have a uh, mixing stick on the end so that this will give us a really good way of mixing it. Again, hardware store in the sheetrock department is where we find these mixers. Uh, we've got some mixed up because of time because this does take a while to get nice and smooth. Uh, and if you've let it, it's always nice after you mix it to let it sit for several hours just to really get, uh, get that all mixed in well. And what we'll do is we'll pour water into our container first. First. And then we'll start adding the powder to it and we'll start the mixing process. Let's come over here just a little bit more so everybody can see at home. So that way, do we lose we our- We got technical uh, difficulties. Do you guys sell the Venetian plaster in five gallon buckets? We don't. We sell it in bags like this because most of the people um, that we work with like using it on furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, but that way you can just, we, we're gonna have a sale on this so that way if you buy two bags, it's going to be a special price, so that way mm -hmm. you can just dump these down into a five gallon bucket. And the good thing is this never goes bad. So even after you've made it like this, you can, um, we usually will just take a little bit of saran wrap. Little, you want to put a little water on top, then you take the saran wrap and cover the inside top, and then you want to put your sealed airtight top on this. Most of the time these containers, you can get the tops, Lid. lids that go on that. So it's airtight and it'll it'll last well. Forever. It will last forever. It will never go bad. So yeah. it's a great thing to never know. Seen <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to stir this up and this, again, I did this earlier and you can see the consistency of it. It's like, oh, like thick cake batter. Uh, if any of you have ever worked with sheetrock, it's a, thin, a little thinner consistency than sheetrock. And what you, this, there is a happy medium. We don't want it too thin because then it'll take a lot more plaster for coverage. We don't want it too thick because then it'll be very difficult to apply and also the dry time will be much longer. But you can see how smooth that is. We've got all the the little particles down. Do I need to make this night before or am I okay? You know, you can make this the night before and let it sit overnight. And it may work better. And yeah, it might not necessarily work better, but you don't have to mix it up the day of. You know, a lot of people, we've, we've talked about this as far as the different surfaces that this can go on. You can even use this on countertops. You can use this on brick inside as far as um, I love, I'll just do a shout out to um, Encore Tamara. She does a great job with her finishing and her clients and had a great uh, before and after picture on our before and after group. If you're not part of that group, please join the Amy Howard at Home before and after group. You'll be able to see what a lot of people are doing as projects and it will inspire you too. Amy, uh, Leslie has a question. She'd like to know, um, she says, I have a wall that I have a glaze finish on it. Um, can you do this over top of glaze finish and have some show through like you would see in Italy? She could. Well, again, the glaze finish has got a glazing liquid in there that will have sealed and it'll be very slick. Uh, I have a concern that the Venetian plaster over long term will adhere to that. Uh, again, you hate to go through all that work and expense of doing it only for that to, to come off. Okay, I have a suggestion. Okay. So, th if we, I, I just see this like in an Italian restaurant or in Italy or whatever, and what, is it Leslie that's asking this question? So what I would do is I would maybe come back in the areas of where I'm gonna be painting the plaster with my primer and leave the exposed areas of where she's wanting it to kind of be, because it's mm -hmm. not, it shouldn't be here and there. Mm -hmm. It should be kind of strategic areas and then fold in over it. So I think that's a great suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll be quiet. And that's all right. Takes a village, right? It does. So again, next thing we wanna do is have some have some cotton rags, some lint-free cotton rags. 
Again, we want to make sure there's not any dust or any particles on here before we start. And you'll see while we've got the putty knife, we're going to use it as the applicator to put on our trowel and begin troweling. This takes a little bit of a technique because there's angles that we'll be doing with this because the flatter the trowel, the more it will offload and the higher the angle, the more it'll spread. So you want to play with that a little bit to learn what works best when doing that. You know, the other thing too is that I will tell, I will brag on our product just a little bit. A lot of people have used other plasters and they, they, they are more synthetic. Ours is not synthetic, ours is pure. Um, as far as it only has three ingredients, like I said, it has marble dust, calcium carbonate, which is chalk, and lime. Those three ingredients work together where it's, there's molecules, there's a chemical reaction that's taking place. That this is coming alive, um, and as you start to burnish it in the, the second step that Jean's gonna show us, um, it will literally have a sheen to it, just like the marble. So you can take a glance at this over here. You see that sheen, that's that marble dust, and it's really, really hardy. Um, so, um, one of the things too, you don't want to overwork this and we're going to show you on the second coat. The more you go over this, the more it begins to burnish. That's a term that we'll be using. The burnishing is what gives it the sheen. We don't want that sheen on the first coat. That's the first really coat is just to give us some coverage. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. When people have talked about other products and they talk about ours, they talk about, this is like applying melted butter. It is so easy, it's so smooth. Because there's um, no synthetics. Right, and anytime you're dealing with another plaster that has synthetics in it, it's not nearly as beautiful and easy to work with as ours. Also notice I'm not working in straight lines because we're wanting to give the effect of marble. And as you'll see on the second coat, that marbleized finish is going to have swirls. And that's why when I do this, I'm using little arched application. That looks beautiful already. And see, we just want to get a, all we're doing is just getting a uniform coat. You notice it's not that thick. It's just to give coverage. And there's no texture. There's no texture. It's pretty texture. smooth. A lot of people, we're not going for a stucco. They call it stucco. This is more of a marmarino finish. This is a smooth Venetian plaster finish um, that you'll have, that you'll have swirl marks in it. But um, if you go, when you go back and burnish it, if, it, if it's not, not used with a stencil or anything. All right, so once we get that done, how long does that need to dry? You know, and a lot of it depends on the temperature of the room. Uh, the, the humidity, the thickness of the plaster. Uh, if you let this dry about four hours or more, uh, when we did this as part of finishing, our decorative house. finishing in, in our house, we just, we put a coat on and then by the time we did what we did, we let it over dry overnight and then go back in with the second coat. But see, we've just got a nice coat over the whole thing. You notice there's not, it's as, it's as smooth as I can get it, uh, but I'm not real hung up on continuing to uh, smooth over and smooth over because again, I'm not trying to burnish it. I'm not trying to get the sheen yet. I want this to dry flat and dull. And if there's any imperfections, we're gonna cover those with the second coat. So this is one that you did earlier that had a chance to dry, mm -hmm. and it's just, um, it's, it almost looks like it's been painted. I mean, mm -hmm. you really can't tell that there's plaster here. So that was the first coat. Again, it was just a nice, smooth finish. Finish. And you want to make sure when you, before you start your second coat, make sure that you're your um, trowel doesn't have any dried plaster on it because if it does it's gonna it's gonna leave markings into the 
to the fresh plaster. Yeah, and that's a problem that I have a lot of times if I'm teaching people how to be able to use Venetian plaster, like on the tops of furniture. Because if you paint the base, maybe you do the base of your piece of furniture in milk paint, which looks amazing, um, and then do your top in the white Venetian plaster, and it kind of looks like Carrera marble, mm -hmm. um, when even when it's burnished. You've got to make sure that that trowel is continually clean. So I'll have a little bucket of water and a, a lead-free rag, and I'll continue to clean it constantly because as that plaster begins to dry, it will really affect the pretty finish that you're going to be getting. And don't forget, we are coming to you live from Memphis, Tennessee, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time on Friday, um, July 5th. And so if, if you're catching us live, feel free to ask us questions. And we'd love you to send us love, send us some hearts, let us know where you're from. Um, because we love knowing where our where our clients are from, um, our students, and even a lot of people that watch that have their own business that mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to do the second coat. Again, trowel's clean. We're going to load it up a little bit. Does that first coat make this... Um, seal a little faster or does it is it does it dry faster or does it affect it in any way all of that first coat is for coverage because we're not going to get what we need with one coat it's going to have to be two professionals will even go that third coat because they're really making this uh, a much smoother glossier finish by adding that third coat to it you know, and if you're watching this, most of you are DIYers, and it's all about do-it-yourselfers. It's all about getting a really expensive look in our home that we, we don't want to pay for that look. Because I will tell you, if you had um, a professional come in and do Venetian plaster on your walls in a room, let's say a room is 14 by 16, you're probably going to be paying between three three thousand and forty five hundred dollars for it to be done mm -hmm. minimum Please. certain areas like Miami um, New York different areas higher populated areas you're looking at paying but probably between um, forty five hundred to sixty five hundred dollars so this is something you can very easily do yourself you need a partner that's why I want to make sure <laughs> Jean helps me with projects like this um, and that way help that person do their house and then go and um, and help them do theirs because it's really it's laborious and the fact that you are having to reach and get in corners can you talk to us about corners and walls and um, when you're working on one wall and trying to go over to the next just give us some tips on that yeah when you're going from to the adjacent wall you're gonna have that corner and you're gonna have your trowel and you're gonna get in that corner and you'll pull it out and it's not that difficult at all to do that and as well as there may be crown molding same thing if that crown molding's at the top you'll just go underneath that crown molding and pull down and then work around it and it's very very easy so again you notice I'm not putting a lot of plaster on I'm just getting coverage I'm not really building this up but you thick. are working in circles kind of this and moon you still, effect you still very see very important the arched arched are there any questions? Yes, uh, Michelle would like to know if you want white walls, is the plaster already pure white or did mm -hmm. you tint it? No, it's, it's beautiful. This is the color you want. I love white Venetian plaster walls. They're the best. They never go out of style. They're timeless um, and this is it. So you will use it directly out of the bag um, and mix it up just like Jean did. You can't go wrong. But just the same thing as, as, as we tell you when you are working on a finish for a piece of furniture, Get a 24 by 24 piece of sheetrock like this. Um, that way you can prime it, um, or you can uh, do the plaster on it like Jean did and prime it, but because this was raw sheetrock. Um, but do the example, play with it, get your hand as far as experimenting with it like that, make sure you're comfortable, and then that way you can go and hit your wall. It's really not that hard. We, we actually did this at our church and Gene was able to grab one of the guys who was, um, he helped, he kind of was a jack of all trades guy mm -hmm. and, wrote, and drove one of the buses on, for, on Sunday. And we taught him in just a couple of hours um, on the job training how to be able to do this in all the main halls and bathrooms and it turned out amazing. So we've got our second coat on now. 
What you'll notice too is this begins to dry, it'll dry a lot lighter. You'll see these lighter colors start appearing. And when we're doing a big wall, you're gonna have an area that you will begin working and then you'll go back and burnish and you'll keep a, uh, what we call a wet edge as you continue to work and go back and burnish. That's why it's always good to have two people, one applying, one burnishing. Um, and once we get that second coat on and it's uniform, now I'm gonna clean my trowel and very lightly begin going over it just to smooth it just a little bit. Does it need to dry any amount of time before it, you start doing it this? It does, it does. About how long? You know, as you start seeing the color change, because we don't want to start burnishing it before it begins to dry. You know, when we talk about gilding, you know, we talk about the size coming to tack. It's not fully dry, but it's not fully wet. It's that in-between stage. Same thing with this, if once it's applied, you can't burnish or you'll start pulling the plaster off. But if it gets dry, then you can't burnish it. It's really gotten to the point, it's too late. So as you start to see areas begin to get lighter, mm -hmm. you know that it, you can start doing that. I have a question too. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody wants to do the Venetian plaster on an indoor brick facade, like of their fireplace, mm -hmm. which looks fabulous, how would you recommend them going about doing that? Mix it up just like this. And are we, were we going for Venetian plaster or are we going more for a German schmear? Look? A German schmear. Uh, if you're doing that, you can apply that with any kind of a trowel because it's going on brick. And I assume we want some areas that are not showing that's uh, that we're the pulling through. coming through. Right. So we're just going to hit it in certain places. We're not really, matter of fact, I may want to apply it with, with a, a brush. With a brush or a sponge rather okay. than this because it may look too choppy. Uh, if you'll notice this one little area where I see where it's starting to get some sheen right mm -hmm. there. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see mm -hmm. that, but that's where I began to do the. Um, it's still a little damp. I'm going to slightly... Notice it, how Jean's trial, too, is up I'm, on edge. I'm, it's, I'm, it's up on edge. It's not flat. If it's flat, it'll pull. But what I'm doing is I'm just, just enough pressure from the weight of the trowel, and I'm just kind of pulling the trowel. And notice I'm not going in a straight line, either. I'm kind of making semicircles because, again, how my application is, it will affect the design or the pattern. See how it's starting to dry a little bit there. You can see that lighter color. And as I do this, the way that I know that I've really got a nice, the correct, uh, the correct amount of dry on this, it'll sound like a skating rink. It'll sound like ice skates in a skating rink. Can you start to see the sheen now? Oh, I on can. This? I wonder, I hope with the light that they can see that at home. Guys, it's beautiful. I'm just going to tell mm -hmm. you, artwork and paintings and everything shows up so beautifully on, mm -hmm. um, on a Venetian plaster wall. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't ask you this before we went live, so can I ask a favor? Um, would you mind showing them really quickly how they can create a three-dimensional embossed look on their wall with a stencil. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna do a third, it'll require a third coat. If we burnish it again, what happens is it makes it more difficult for the next coat of plaster to adhere. You want it, um, you want it look rougher in the texture, rougher meaning it hasn't been burnished. If it's too smooth, again, you'll get a little bit of difficulty in the uh, adhesion of that next coat. But you can also do this on a piece of furniture, too. Mm hmm You can do this on furniture, too. All right, so this is just our, um, it's an Amy Howard at home. Keep in mind, we may be jumping the gun a little early on this because it's not dry, but 
we'll give it a shot. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I just thought, so they know, we've mm -hmm. already shown them how to do the mm -hmm. walls, mm -hmm. and then that way, how it's got to be able to dry. Mm -hmm. But now if they wanted to be able to create an embossed effect, whether mm -hmm. on a piece of furniture mm -hmm. or on a wall, mm -hmm. I just wanted you to be able to show them. So we've got that down, and it's now that, again, now that she wants to do this, we will, uh, we wouldn't fully burnish that last coat so that we've got better adhesion on this coat. So we're just gonna very lightly go over, and I start with my putty knife as opposed to my trowel. Why Re is that? Reason being, I wanna put some of the plaster down in small amounts so that I'm not pulling the stencil. Because if the stencil moves, it will affect the pattern negatively. You know, it'll mess it up. So I'm gonna do a little bit, like the very top. Then are you gonna work your way down? Then I'll work my way down, okay. and then I'll use the trowel because I've got some plaster holding the stencil in place. Are there any questions? Are we good? All right, guys, this is your chance to be able to ask questions. Come close enough so that way they can kind of see what he's what he's doing. So right now, I've, um, I've asked Jean, I know we were talking about doing the plaster on walls, but what I wanted to do, a lot of people like using the plaster on furniture, the tops of furniture. Um, you can do this on the top of a console. Guys, you can use this plaster on brick, you can use it on furniture, you can use it on, um, you can use it in a bathroom. I mean, as far as being able, it, it's great with moisture. Any, any area, there's a lot of humidity, it's beautiful. Jean, how much pressure are you using? I'm, I am using very little pressure. I'm, all I'm doing is just allowing that plaster to get down in that negative areas of the, of the stencil. Now that I've got a little road there, I can start using the trowel because I've got something to hold it in place. So and that act almost as glue, mm -hmm. holding that down. And again, I'm not using much pressure with this. Only reason I'm going back to the trowel is because I can cover more area than I can with the putty knife. You know, this would be a great backsplash in a kitchen too. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you wanted the stencil in a color? You could, you just have to, you'll tinge your plaster. You totally could. And working on a small space, especially if it's on a piece of furniture, you can use our pigment powders. Um, you can use the milk paint to be able to tint it. Um, it'd be amazing. I love this. I'm sorry. I know you're like, I was showing them how to do walls, but you can do this embossing technique on walls. Um, but this is just such a cool, cool look. It's so easy to do. And we, you know, one of the things that we talk about here at Amy Howard, we talk about enjoying the bragging rights because this is definitely something you can enjoy the bragging rights from. What would be the dry time between the skim, uh, cost in the embossing coat the, the skim coat and the embossing coat you know same thing we should have allowed about three hours to dry before we start with this but for the sake of time we're going to go ahead and so talk to us really quickly why, what's the importance when you are taking this one the importance of metal working with metal and then also taking the putty knife and putting it onto the trowel itself well the putty knife is because i can't get the trowel down into the bucket and i can be very strategic of where i'm placing the plaster onto my trowel reason we're using metal is because when we do burnish it the burnishing it's almost like if you think about sharpening a knife on a whetstone, it's that same effect. We're kind of buffing the, the marble dust that's in the plaster to give it that Beautiful sheen. sheen. The other thing is, can you, when you load this back up, look at, look at the side he's loading this on. It's the, when you hold the trial up, it's on the left side of how he's working. I'm loading. If I was left-handed, I would be loading the other side. But I'm loading the this inside. side because this is the side that I would be. I'm not. I'm not working, a, pushing away. I'm pulling to me. It's using when you're doing a, a whole room. You're going to use a lot of muscle, 
And so it's about bringing it inward as opposed to pushing it away. That's a real important um, aspect for these guys to know at home. Now, are you saying it won't burnish after the last coat is dry? Mm -hmm. We're going to burnish it. Yeah. Okay. We're going we're gonna to burnish after we finish. And the cool the thing washing. is when you burnish, it's sealed. You don't have to come back with anything to seal it. There's this, no when you, needed. There's no wax. There's no nothing needed. So I don't know if you can kind of tell, but do you see the sheen on that? Um, and this one has been done a long, long time ago. That burnishing and that sheen that we got on the top of that from embossing it um, is just a natural process of that marble dust that's in this Venetian plaster. Um, but all Venetian plasters are not the same. Ours is like working with butter. Now, if you wanted to remove the plaster and do a new pattern, could you do that? Um, you'd have to sand it down. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you embossed it, you'd need to sand that down because this is permanent. Um, this is a beautiful technique. I'm just gonna tell you, especially if you've done this on a wall, just doing the tone on tone like this with the white and just having the sheen, um, this is classic and timeless. Can you glaze over the plaster? You can glaze over the plaster. But you, the great thing about the plaster is, is that you don't have to do anything else to it. You don't have to wax it, you don't have to seal it, nothing. It will wear beautifully. So let's say, and this is something that you know we always worried about and people do, would think that when we would plaster something, that it's not durable. So let's say it got dirty. Um, plaster loves soap. So liquid soap, was it Dove that we would use? Mm -hmm. Liquid soap and water. Just liquid soap and water will clean that off and then you can burnish it right over it. It's so easy to take care of. You can touch it up because there's no shelf life on this. Even once you've mixed it up, um, it's good indefinitely. Then that way you can just come back in and touch up wherever you need to. All right, let me get the excess off. You do such a great job, Jane. Oh, thank you. You're a great tennis player, and you're a great plasterer. <laughs> tennis is easier. <laughs> <laughs> we played this morning before we came in here to do this Finish Friday, and um, I can tell. I think we 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 leaped and reached a little bit too much this morning. I'm so worried. All right. So now, what I'm making sure of. Remember that when we remove the stencil, we wanna make sure that the embossing is smooth because we can't come back and smooth it out once we, once we remove the stencil. So I'm gonna just go back over. So you're burnishing it really a little bit right now. Well, not really. I'm just, I'm just smoothing that out. All right, are we ready? We're ready. Right. You're going to lift it there. Ah, I love this. Love this, love this, love this. Love this, love mm. this, love this. Can you see this, guys? Let's see if I can. Look how beautiful that is. Does that show up on the camera? Is it better that way with the light? Mm -hmm. Love that. So embossing something with just these beautiful Mylar stencils. Um, you're gonna have to use an open mylar like that. It's so beautiful. Now, just to kind of wrap this up, Jean, if we're gonna do embossing like this, where do we, where do we wait now as far as making sure that we're at tack um, before we, we get the sheen on it? Well, we're gonna wait and watch this begin to lighten up because again, as it, as it dries, this will go lighter. So I'll be looking for areas that are getting lighter and then I'll come back and begin to do the burnishing. So right now we cannot burnish or we're just gonna smear the embossing. So we would come, wait maybe 15, 20 minutes and we'd start seeing that, but the, it has got to firm up before we can start embossing or we'll just, it'll, uh, we'll end up making just a third, <laughs> third smooth coat. But the great thing about it is you can use this in a shower, in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. You can use this as a backdrop, mm -hmm. um, even an area in your kitchen, like your mm -hmm. backsplash. Mm -hmm. you, this can be a, a countertop. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many applications that you can use this on, and it doesn't look 
too, too DIY. It looks like something that would cost a lot of money mm -hmm. and that you will enjoy it and enjoy the bragging rights from it mm -hmm. for many years to come. Mm -hmm. Guys, just remember that all Venetian plasters are not created equal. It's important with our plaster because it, it comes with, it's lime, calcium carbonate, um, and uh, marble dust that the ingredients, the recipe that we have has been around for thousands of years, but when you go and you start getting other Venetian plasters that are pre-mixed, they have a lot of synthetics in it, mm -hmm. they're not gonna work to the degree that ours does, they're a lot harder in the application process, and this is like working with melted butter. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and it's mm -hmm. easy to mix up. Um, if you're just now tuning on, be sure to go back to the beginning where Jean kind of talks to you about mixing it, and to please get your 24 by 24 sections like this if you're going to be working on your wall and experiment and get used to it first um, and then grab a partner get somebody to help you and then that way you can do your wall and keep in mind too when you're mixing the plaster get one of those little paper masks a uh, little rest because it does it's dusty and that's a good word um and not, it's not toxic but it would be best to use just the little uh, paper respirators that you that cost 50 cents at the paint store so that uh, you're not inhaling the marble dust and the lime. That's a great word. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your 4th of July weekend. Yes. Thank you you're welcome. for helping me today. <laughs> um, if this is something that you enjoyed and you know that there's somebody that loves decorating their home and mm -hmm. they would love to do this too, please share our videos um, on Facebook. And, um, and like us and mm -hmm. tell your friends. This is something that we do because we're passionate about. We love teaching others. We love helping others to craft a more beautiful life. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy.